Hey everyone, Karen Hurd here. I hope you had a great, great Christmas and a happy New Year. I know it's New Year's resolution time again. Happens every year. It's like crazy, right? But uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I tend to write my New Year's resolutions, I like write them and they're like 20 things long. And I know they're not supposed to be that long, but it's like you want this total life makeover, right? And um, this year I have learned some things and I'm doing my resolutions completely differently. Now, I know if you've done any kind of a goal setting um, you know that, well, they're supposed to be smart, right? They're supposed to be, what's that supposed to be? Um, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. In other words, it's supposed to be something kind of bite-sized, something that you can get done, uh, something that matters to you, and something with a deadline, and that's supposed to motivate you. But how many of you guys have gone and done that Right, you've created this super smart goal, and it just didn't happen. And and weight loss is hey guys, I'm so glad you guys joined me. Um, weight loss is one of those things where we really see that happen a lot. And I and I'm picking on weight loss only because that is like one of the number one New Year's resolutions. Every single time people want to shed some weight, whether it's ten pounds or a hundred or more. You know, they want to shed weight and they so they put a deadline on it. By June, I'm going to be 50 pounds lighter and I'm going to work out every day and I'm going to eat more veggies. And I'm, and they've got all these things that they're going to do and they're all good things. But how many of us don't really make it happen? And there's a couple of things that get in our way and I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of it. And I've wanted to make some things done. I wanted to do things differently. So I thought I would share, kind of take you along my journey and share with you some of the things that I am incorporating this year. Um, and then, by the way, if you stay to the end of the video, I've got a giveaway for you. So I hope you can, hope I have give you enough good value that you want to stay till the end. All right, one of the things that you need to remember is um, you don't have to have a total life makeover in order to have some significant change in your life. In fact, I've taken all those res all those things I'd love to see different and I've gotten it down to one single habit that I'm going to start with. So one of the things I would suggest to you is to look for one new habit, a single habit, and here's why. Um, neuroscience is showing us, I learned this from John Asaroff and a man named James Clear is doing a lot of work with habits. So if you put habits into a search engine, you're going to get a ton of resources now. And yeah, grandma was right, right? Make your bed every morning. Those simple habits, believe it or not, are actually the groundwork that lead to bigger habits down the road. And I think that's what's really important to know. So, for example, one of my habits, I come from a long line of night owls. The women in my family, we just don't go to bed on time. And so we don't get up early and then that shifts the whole day. And um, and I tend to get my second wind at around 11. Like when I'm supposed to be going to bed, I'm like, now I'm up. And so working on that too. So one of my goals is to make my bedtime more regular so that I can learn to get up earlier. And here I am you know, a woman of a certain age, finally kind of figuring this out. So that should be some more encouragement to you, right? It can happen no matter how far along, you know, your, your lifeline you are. Um, but anyway, so I'm choosing one habit. And even though it doesn't seem like a big deal, and even if I'm not doing it perfectly, so long as I keep that habit in mind, that's one thing, keep it in mind, and keep the end goal. The end goal is I want to get to do that miracle morning that you've all heard about. In order to do that, I got to get up earlier and then structure my morning. But that was just like too much for me. That was like seven or eight things to get done in order then to get the workout in and then in order to get the cooking in and all that other kind of stuff. So this time I'm working on one. And that is an a, a earlier bedtime, 11 p.m., which sometimes still seems to come to pretty early to me, so I really have to work on it. But working on that one habit is going to be that linchpin that allows these other things I want to see happen in my life take place. Now, here's the other thing, and John Asaroff was talking about this. When you start a habit, and they did a study where they actually had people floss only one or two teeth. 
What? That's crazy. You got a whole mouthful. But they started them on one or two teeth. And do you know what happened like six, seven, eight, nine days in? They were flossing their whole mouths. And that's the purpose of habits. First off, we you start small, your brain doesn't throw up a lot of resistance. It doesn't go, well, you know, that's too hard. I can't do that. Or I need like 18 pieces of equipment. Or I need to have this other thing in place. You just start somewhere. And the key is, right, because this is how bad habits started, right? When when you gained weight, you didn't start because you went to the buffet and like binged every night for, you know, three weeks. It started out with maybe an extra donut or a couple extra cookies or not working out as much. It started with small habits. It just compounded in the wrong direction. And so if you can start with a small habit and compound it in the right direction, what's actually going to happen is you will increase um, what you get done. In fact, we have um, uh, a weight loss program that we do that's been really effective. And one of the things I would coach people on is to just start with 10 minutes of exercise. Don't worry about whether or not you can get in an hour or whether or not you know, you're going to run three miles. Just start with 10 minutes. Usually first thing in the morning is the best time if you can do it. And what people would find and it really played out that now I know that there's official neuroscience behind it. But what people would find is that within a couple of weeks, that 10 minutes became 15, became 20, became half an hour. Very relatively easy for them to incorporate. So start with a small habit. Don't worry about it being too small. So long as it's directed towards your goal, it'll naturally expand if you do it. And if you miss a day or you don't do it perfectly, give yourself some grace. Don't use that as an excuse to stop. Just keep going. Pick it right back up the next time you can. That's also real key. The other thing is, and Brendan Bruchard says this, and James Clear was saying it, is who do you want to become? What is, if you will, the purpose or the why behind this goal? Um, and that's really important. So for me, it's about being able to accomplish more of this very big goal list that I have. And it's about becoming much more focused and mindful in my mornings. And that's where things can slide off. That's where the workouts don't happen. That's where some of the other things I want to make sure happen, happen. And uh, people that know me know that Karen, you call Karen at 7 in the morning. She's like, Bleh. she's still <laughs> she's still out. So I want to, I want to change that. So it's also, also no, it's never too late to start something new. Um, but what I want to become is an even more... Um, mindful, organized person, right? So that's what I'm keeping in mind as I'm doing this habit. Um, so I hope that was helpful to you. And if you're one of those that, by the way, wants to shed some weight, because we kind of talked about weight loss and incorporating that, I have got this, this really awesome um, collection of tips for you. And it, it includes like seven secrets to weight loss, how to lose the right, right weight. Can you say that three times fast? not the wrong weight. And what I learned about a lot of these diet book authors blew my mind. I had no idea and it's all in there. So if that's something that you want, no problem. There's no charge for it. It's really helped a lot of people. It's got a ton of good information out there. Um, just you know, message me. You can just kind of click the, the message button or DM me or you know, smoke signals, drop a comment, whatever it takes. And I'll make sure that, that you get that to you. But if this has been helpful to you, go ahead and share it with someone. You could be helping somebody to change a life and make sure that that New Year's resolution happens for you. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. It's been awesome to have you, and I look forward to catching up with you soon. Bye now.